I'm Kate Owens. I'm an art teacher here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Today I'm talking with Quayshawn Whitlock, who's a screen printer and artist and educator here in Pittsburgh. He's going to be telling us about his work and how he uses uh, characters who have influenced his identity as part of his art. And then we're going to be asking you to make art in that um, thought process as well, connecting to people who have been influential to your identity. So, Quayshawn, um, I want to start off by asking you to tell me a little bit about how you became uh, an artist, how you came to make art. Right on. Peace, peace everyone. Uh, my name is Quayshawn, as, uh, as Kate had mentioned. I guess I started this journey actually working at the Andy Warhol Museum years ago. I was uh, 15 years old, started as an internship and the Andy Warhol often uses printmaking as a vehicle to talk about everything, whether it is the pop art legacy that Andy Warhol created, or it is even just color theory, or you know, actual photographic social screen printing, which is kind of what we'll get into a little bit later. Mm -hmm. But photographic social screen printing, and even just the nature of social screen printing and printmaking, have served to be an incredible vehicle for me um, in the arts, but as well as as a learning app too, you mm -hmm. know, even just to dig in a little bit further on the many different ways that an image could come together, that an idea could come together, but as well, the Andy Warhol kind of, kind of got me with the bug. They mm -hmm. hit me, they, they got me started um, learning about it a little bit, actually got me involved in the studio that we're in right now called Artist Image Resource, and Artist Image Resource often partners with the Andy Warhol Museum in some of the development and production of those screens and some of the uh, social screen printing aspects of our curriculum and our education basis for Andy Warhol and kind of for some of the, uh, the workshops that we do. But for me, essentially, you know, just, just working through it all, I'm 26 now, so mm -hmm. in terms of our, our little story that we gave, yeah. um, it's, been, it's been a little bit. I'm working with the Warhol and then getting an opportunity to come up here and actually partner with Artist Image Resource and then actually become on the payroll, actually become an yeah, employee here and all that jazz. So to actually get a hands-on experience working in a print lab, but as well an experience to kind of be in an arts career. Right. To actually, you know, myself being an artist, trying to, you know, take over the world and, and make many things and you know, sell my artwork to everybody. Um, there's a, a need and a professional need to actually eat off of the arts. You know, to right. actually be in the arts, make a career out of the arts. So an exposure to the Warhol, an exposure to a studio like this was a game changer for me. Absolutely. And allowing you to make art and um, have a career, yeah, both absolutely. together. And especially with a studio like this, you know, the, the making art and the career go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, many aspects that we are serving as this arm for the community to you know, help with screen production or help with just space to, for studios and for artists to work in, as well as just for teachers and educators. But as well, you know, we are kind of the front facing mm -hmm. team and family, so, you mm -hmm. know, we, are also making work ourselves. You know, we're also practicing artists. Absolutely. So you know, to kind of be in here in a space that is almost like a, uh, uh, I guess, almost like a little competitive nature mm -hmm. in a way. You to, want to uh, see what other people are yeah, working you on. What inspires people are on, you. It's inspires yeah. the conversation. Um, yeah. Printmaking is a community that uh, evolves and develops off of individuals that are willing to kind of share their experiences, but as well that we all learn from each other. Mm -hmm. Just because you know, they mentioned earlier that screen printing and printmaking are just so deep, there's many different things, many different ways yeah. that it can happen. You know, screen printing itself is photographic. It's also, you know, stencil based. Mm -hmm. Many ways can even just be done just by itself with the tools. You know, sure. sometimes you hear people, you know, screen print is the brush or whatever the case, but um, screen printing is a beautiful thing that is just like tip of the iceberg of mm -hmm. printmaking. So mm -hmm. it is something that, you know, as printmakers come together and have conversations, whether you know, you're a painter at heart, or you're a screen printer at heart, or you are a sculptor at heart, and in many ways you could find a connection that brings everything together. Mm -hmm. with so, Beautiful. It is cool. It's a decent thing. Um, so, and, um, now we're going job. to transition into talking about uh, this piece. So, um, Quayshawn, this is your piece, John Henry. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how this developed, and um, also tell, tell us who John Henry is. I mean, Hopefully the world already knows. This is uh, John Refresh Henry. Refresh our memories. Yeah, true that. But I mean, John Henry was is a character that was actually inspired from a real life individual um, in Virginia. John Henry was um, based off of a real life slave, an escaped slave, as they mentioned to say. So a free black man mm -hmm. um, that was working on the railroads. And essentially, even for me personally, my connection with John Henry goes way back. That you know, we used to have 
conversations early in like English in the elementary school. In you know, elementary you know, school, there was that tall tale yeah, unit, yeah, you know. You, you only had John Bunyan. John, Paul Bunyan. Paul, Paul Bunyan, 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 thank you. you had, Paul uh, Bunyan. Johnny Appleseed. Yes. And, uh, John Henry was essentially, he was the black tale. Um, mm -hmm. He was also the tale that uh, was a little bit, it was a little bit deeper in terms of this, this tale of determination and this, mm -hmm. this kind of competitive, this competitive strength he had against the steam engine. So John Henry, the story for me early, you know, this is, I'm in third grade, I'm hearing this story about uh, the, the black man who was, you know, the big strong black man essentially he worked on all the railroads. He was breaking through the mountains mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, make pathways for right. the way the tracks down. He, him, he, and, uh, he was strong enough to he was strong enough be, to, yeah, uh, to break down the mountain and in some of the earlier images, there's actually a man down here who's laying the pins for John. Okay. So as he's going, as he's breaking just stuff, the man just puts the pin. Puts the pin down. John and slams drops the, it. Drops and the thing, and they kind of keep moving on. Building the railroad. And, you know, he was like a machine. Right, like a machine. But he was like best in town. You know, mm -hmm. best in the community, best in the ground. You know, best even as the stories were told. And it got to the point where the man, the white man who owned the railroads, the men essentially who were developing these railroads a lot of steam engines. So they were like, you know, we're going to kind of essentially change the story a little bit, change the narrative, mm -hmm. or, you know, up our production. Right. Uh, so they exactly. brought in the steam engine. John Henry was getting his character tested, so he felt as though he needed to go up against the steam engine. And, you know, even, not even just, uh, you know, he felt he needed to go up against the steam engine, but it was this story of, you know, the man versus the machine, as mm -hmm. you already mentioned. Yeah, I mean, this idea that, you know, you have Men behind the men behind the scenes making these things happen, whether it's a production landscape or it's a developing landscape, and bringing something like the steam engine, you know, crushes that for something that you know John Henry had built. Makes you know, somebody you know, else obsolete. Makes someone else obsolete, exactly. Right. So you know, to go up against the steam engine was huge, and the story as it goes is that John Henry, you know, worked for nine hours breaking through the mountains. Um, actually, I think he made like 17 miles or something Ooh. crazy as opposed to steam engine only made it 10 miles. But yes. you know, essentially John Henry won the race. By the time he got to the end, he was so overworked that he actually had a heart attack and died. Oh. So yeah, I mean, even back to the conversation we were having about the elementary school, and, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Amongst all the stories, John Henry kind of had the most incredible tale, mm -hmm. but at the end he died. Yeah. And it was always, it's kind of always a, a common tale amongst our, our, our black heroes, mm -hmm. and some of our our heroes that you know I kind of grew up seeing, whether yeah. it is in a, a fictional entertainment landscape or mm -hmm. even a fictional kind of folklore and you know even spoken word story landscape, yeah. that you know there's always this the situation where you, know, you kind of reach this height of glory, whether you reach this height of greatness for a certain time, right? You know what I mean? For that little bit, uh, that little period, and then you die. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that is something that course would stick with you yeah, know, a, little, a young person, little young yeah. person. But I mean the story of John Henry is just not really told as much anymore. It's still mm -hmm. a fun story, it's still a fun tale. So when did you start making art about John Henry? <sighs> That's a good question. Appreciate that. I mean the, the, I started making work with John Henry early on, um, even before I started screen printing. Mm -hmm. um, so John Henry was originally like a painting I did for like my seventh grade art class. Yeah. Um, Miss. Way back. Yeah, I think it was her name. Miss Andrews. Miss Andrews. Something way back. Uh, crazy, mm -hmm. crazy old mm -hmm. times. Um, middle school at Shadyside Academy mm -hmm. way back. So we had an opportunity just to like do anything. It mm -hmm. was like the end of the year and we had to essentially like create our own project. Mm -hmm. And if we executed it, we would get a good grade. Sure. And I chose to just paint whatever. Um, I was kind of, I was starting to get into painting a little bit more. Um, the arts for me was always something I connected with, but I, I played a lot of sports as sure. well growing up and stuff like that. So it wasn't necessarily something that even now I knew I was gonna be having conversations with other educators right. about the work I created or anything like that. I mean, John Henry was was an outlet. He was something mm -hmm. that, you know I mean, I thought was, you know, incredible story. And in many ways I just created him, just like put him on my wall at right. home. You, you wanted, know, you made just, it because you wanted, wanted to myself. represent him. And actually it was one of those projects too that I knew that yeah, you know, because I wanted it and it was something that I had a connection with that I knew it was gonna come out great. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm mm -hmm. so confident that yep. um, this project, even seventh grade, seventh grade Quay is yeah. gonna paint this. It's gonna be beautiful. It's like I wanna knock this out. And right. it, was, it worked out. Um, the painting, I don't even have it anymore. It's still at the school. I like oh, okay. Over there. okay. Um, so I am trying to get that back as yeah. we're talking about things. But I was, I mean, that was before I even cared for real. For real. Oh. Like, it was one of those, 
like my teacher was trying to come get this thing, come get it, and I just never came and got it. Oh, and I was like always going, like running to practice somewhere. Sure. And like, it's just, okay. I just got left to this. So you, it was meaningful to make it, but then the, the object, once it was done, maybe wasn't the, as significant. The object, when it was done, was it rang a little bit within you know my friends and, and the community okay. and the teachers and things that you know I knew it was going to be something that uh, that I was going to like right. but I didn't necessarily attach with other people about that okay oh, you know I was going to be shown so what was the response from like, other people um, the response was wow I didn't know you could paint wow like, <laughs> I didn't know you mean. wow I didn't know that you can like create artwork like this or you know wow I didn't know you were an artist that hmm. was kind of what started happening in the conversation. Um, especially at Shady Side, like it's a private school, so there's a lot of it's a lot of talent. It's a lot, yeah. of, you know, what I mean, just kind of and a lot, a lot of, of options, a lot of options, a lot of resources. Yeah. So you know, for students, in many ways, to be in a, amongst students, really for the first time, that being amongst students who like actually took a real attachment, a real credit, mm -hmm. you know, a real goal mm -hmm. towards learning and like towards developing. Mm -hmm. You know, for these students to be around me and you know taking all this, you know, grade A's and getting four point O's was you know, a very sick, that was number one goal, right, you know, right. aside from the sports and everything like that. Um, and some of the schools I came from before that wasn't necessarily the case. Sure. So to be in a community where it was that real, it was that serious. Right. And for students around me to like take that attachment to the work I was creating, it was mm -hmm. like, wow, that's, mm -hmm. it felt good. Um, that's great. My teacher ended up like putting it up in the classroom for a while. Cool. I was just chilling, I was cool with that, and everybody was talking about this work that I made. And, uh, just kind of fell through the cracks for real. Like, um. What I like from this is that you were invited to make something and you made something that you knew was going to be meaningful to you and that then let other people know that art was meaningful and they noticed that. But you, like you were making it for you and that's what was important about it. I mean, that's, how, um, that's how you got to do it. That's how you got to I mean, do that's it. That's important for real. That really is important. Um, and that is for, that is honestly how John Henry, this one, the big one came. The big one came about. Um, Later. The big one came about later, and this is a silk screen print. This is kind of a mixed media piece, so there is a lot of paint involved. Um, there's about six layers of screen print in here as well. So the original painting of John Henry was just acrylic. It was you know, just like acrylic paints, mm -hmm. uh, like water-based paints that yeah. you have in the classroom type of deal. It was actually around the same size of these prints that we're seeing here. It was like nine by twelve. It was pretty small, mm -hmm. uh, and it was. Actually working here, we have a lot of access to larger materials, a lot of resources. The screen printing that we'll talk about can go from as small as 10 by 14 mm -hmm. to you know 68 by 72. Yeah. So there, there be, I saw a screen that was taller yeah, than me. Yeah, it could be very, very large. <laughs> yeah. So working here, I had an opportunity to like use some of those materials. And this was actually the first print I'd ever done this size. So mm -hmm. John Henley, mm -hmm. you know, just like the, kind of the same means as the painting, it was like to choose something I'm kind of comfortable with right, or something right. that you know I'll be fun have fun executing as well I was pretty confident that I can like throw them in a frame maybe put them in a show or two or something mm -hmm. like that with mm -hmm. printmaking there's a lot of multiples that happen so right. you know as we're working through it I might have had it in mind to keep one or two for myself or sell some mm -hmm. but as well you know it was always the idea to maybe have some display to the world yeah this and, is going to be for others to to see right now. absolutely yeah and uh the print itself was originally a CMYK print. I'm not sure how deep you want to get into the CMYK. It's a photographic printing measure where you actually can take something like a full color painting or full color photograph and separate it into four screens. So the photographic screen printing is something that is one color. So even kind of like a t-shirt that right. I'm wearing right now, mm -hmm. that would be a really good, even t-shirts that we have at home. Yes. Coca-Cola bottle t-shirts are a really mm -hmm. great example. Some of you watching that uh, are likely yeah, wearing you know, screen print right Whatever now. your screen print shirts yeah. are, it's great for advertisement, it's great for posters, t-shirts, all the means, mm -hmm. but it's one color, one mm -hmm. color process. So if right. you see something like the Coke bottle shirt, you need multiple colors to make that onto this one white mm -hmm. t-shirt or black mm -hmm. t-shirts. You need a screen for the red, screen mm -hmm. for the white letters, screen for the black shape of the bottle and the full means. And with John, you know, if I wanted to get all these colors, mm -hmm. I would need 20 some screens. Sure. So I would kind of dial back from that a little bit and mm -hmm. I'm able to separate it out into four screens, mm -hmm. um, much like a like HP printer that you would have at home or like a little laser jet printer yeah. that you would have, Epson printer, whatever the case to where whenever it goes through those print profiles of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, mm -hmm. or the C, the M, 
the Y and the K, so mm -hmm. it is essentially each layer is a blue, and then the blue mixes with the red, the red mixes with the yellow, and then you drop the black over top of all of it to kind of get this beautiful full range Pretty. color yeah. of photograph. So mm -hmm. with John, and even with this practice that I continue to do, to take something like the CMYK, the screen print, and actually print one layer of the cyan, then paint some, mm -hmm. and then print some layers of the magenta or the yellow, um, even maybe add some layers of paint or even mm -hmm. flip some of the screen. So even printing yellow first or printing magenta mm -hmm. next and then coming back with the blue. Um, really just experiment, right? I like that about process. your work, that that's a yeah. thing that, yes, it, we can tell this is John Henry, it's still, the colors are clear, but there's experimentation that happens right. uh, for how it's a little bit mixed media, how it's a little bit, um, you know, there's, there's parts that aren't perfect photographic representation because that's not what you're trying to do. Like you're trying to be expressive using the medium. And uh, I mean, a lot of these paints came in because the, uh, the CMYK didn't work out like mm -hmm. I wanted it right. to. Um, it's a, uh, <laughs> we it's make a, mistakes as artists. Things don't always go the way we expect. It is a fine night process to, you know, to be able to dial into the blues, the reds and yeah. the yellows. You have to make sure all of your paints are a certain way, mm -hmm. uh, the way you trans down the color, so the way you actually mix the colors to a certain transparency level to mix, you know, your red with the yellow to make a right orange. Yeah. So you know, if you have too much yellow, then you're not going to get the right orange, or if you have too much red, it's going to throw it off. Yeah. So down with all those little sciences, the top of the screen, the top of the way I'm layering stuff can sometimes yeah. get get weird and difficult. Right. So I was getting a little bit too much yellow in John's skin. So I started actually painting some gold in, actually mm -hmm. putting like actual gold into his skin. Cool. And these little layers of blue are from the cyan that got shifted. Yeah. So you know, it worked out, but it wasn't necessarily the gold. That wasn't you know, the plan. Was, right. you know, was registration. Working really, with what happened. Working with what happened, but as well, um, these earlier CMYK prints for me were a dial, a process to really dial in on the registration mm -hmm. and like making sure that the layering. The layering yeah. And Really, the process, of course, behind all of it, you know, the science between separating out all these films, but even the execution of all that. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, I can talk for days about how we need certain blues, reds, and yellows, and I need to make my images look a certain way, but I still have to put all that into action, right. print it. And, and you know, sometimes that, that doesn't always go the way you expect it to. It can have variables in it in yeah. itself, so yeah. uh, we definitely get beautiful outcomes with that. And many times that's where the paint just becomes part of the process. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I am, I still would consider myself a traditional printmaker mm -hmm. or a traditional screen printer, so I do like to addition my work mm -hmm. and all the beautiful jazz, but sometimes as we're working, you know, you get one that slid in the screen or one that got too much yellow or one that, you know, you just didn't like the way it looked, so that might get put into the pile of this we'll experiment. We'll look back the at this later. Pile, yeah. Know, the pile that, you know, uh, so become something else yeah, someday. This one, right. So, Thank you for giving us an intro to what this meant to you and how you made it. I think now we're going to transition into you telling us, showing us more about how we make a screen. Like what is, what is silk screen printing and how do we um, prepare the screens to do that?